The exposure systems in today's digital cameras are amazingly accurate and so simple to use. The sophisticated computing power of the camera's exposure engine makes easy work of balancing the three factors of exposure, ISO, or sensitivity, aperture, or the amount of light entering through the lens, and shutter speed, how long the light is on the sensor. We only need to make a few modifications to program mode to give us the most consistent results for birds and wildlife. These modifications begin on camera menu page 3 with the ISO settings. ISO, as mentioned, is a measure of how sensitive the sensor is to light. The camera or the photographer adjusts the sensitivity to produce exposures with the correct balance of shadows and highlights, minimum sensor noise, and the most correct color rendition. The sensitivity has to be turned up in low light and down in bright light. As the sensitivity increases, so does the sensor noise, which results in increasing loss of detail in the image. Also, as the sensitivity increases, the dynamic range, the range from deepest shadow to brightest highlight, becomes more and more compressed, and the color rendition becomes more uncertain. Therefore, you get the best images at the lowest ISO settings. But ISO is only one of three interacting exposure parameters. As ISO goes down, in order to maintain correct exposure, so must the shutter speed. Exposure is a delicate balancing act with three corners. Move one, and the other corners, or at least one of them, must also move to prevent the image from becoming too light or too dark. Slower shutter speeds mean more chance of loss of detail due to camera or subject movement or if you hold the shutter speed constant and don't let it change, the aperture, the size of the hole that emits the light in the lens, has to get bigger. Most digital camera lenses are made to be sharpest at full aperture with the biggest hole, so in actual practice, program mode will hold the aperture at wide open as long as it can and adjust shutter speed as the ISO goes up or down. Note here that program mode is already programmed as the light on your subject changes, to always give you the best combination of ISO, the lowest possible, aperture, where the lens is sharpest, and shutter speed, the highest possible, to minimize the effects of camera or subject movement. That's what the programmed and programmed auto means, and it's the main reason we shoot in program. On the OM-1, you can set the upper and lower limits of ISO. Again, that's page 3 of the camera menus. The lower limit should always be set to ISO 200, as that's the base ISO of the camera and where the sensor produces the best image with the highest dynamic range, least noise, and most accurate colors. The OM-1 will produce usable images up to ISO 25600 and higher in an emergency, but I set the upper limit to 25600. That's enough sensitivity for some surprisingly low light situations. If shooting at night, I'll change that upper limit and set it even higher. Also on camera menu page 2, I set the lowest shutter speed I'm willing to work with, with the ED 100-400mm zoom and its image stabilization, coupled with the in-body stabilization of the OM-1. I set this to 1 640th of a second for stationary and slowly moving subjects. My bird and wildlife modifications to program are my custom 1 and 3 options. I set it to 1 2,000th for my birds in flight modifications. That's custom mode 2. The combined image stabilization of the OM-1 body and the ED 100 to 400 millimeter zoom make hand-holding images at these speeds practical. Set noise filter to standard. Set low ISO processing to detail priority. Set noise reduction to auto. On page 5 of the camera menus, we will set the area that the camera uses to determine exposure. The OM-1 has an ESP exposure program that reads the whole sensor, determines the probable subject, and exposes for it. It also makes some allowance for backlighted subjects. All in all, it is very effective, and I see no reason not to use it for most shots of birds and wildlife. On this page, I also set the camera to meter during continuous or sequential shooting, this means that as I am following a bird or beastie and holding the shutter button down to shoot a sequence, the camera will meter between each shot so that if the light changes as the subject moves, I'll still get correctly exposed images. 
Then I set AEL by half press to only on SAF, that is auto exposure lock and single auto focus. Finally, exiting all menus and returning to the program mode, I set ISO to auto. To do this, press the ISO button on the back of the camera. In the scale that comes up at the bottom of the screen, make sure that ISO Auto is selected. It should have the word recommended above it. The actual number attached will change with changing light, but ISO Auto and recommended will remain. The word recommended is also over the ISO 200 setting. You don't want that one. These modifications, when combined with the next set of modifications to how the JPEG is processed in the camera, will go a long way toward producing the consistently well-exposed images of birds and wildlife that you're after. In the next video, we'll cover those modifications to the JPEG processing engine.